three guys who combined to play 15 seasons in the National Football League trenches. Well, two guys. And Mackey, who didn't do sh**. He just, he just sits there and looks pretty. This is the O-Line Committee. Yes, football. Welcome in to the O-Line Committee, the only show in America where a nerd idiot fan like myself sits down with two former NFL offensive linemen and peppers them with questions. Jeremiah Searles, Alex Boone, how the hell are you guys today? Are you playing? Are you playing chess against yourself on that board over your shoulder there, Alex? No, not today. I was actually just noticing that Searles has his top button buttoned. Always. What the hell are you doing, dude? Always, Seriously, dude. you're about to get dinged right for now. For what? Being School a boy fine for Being sure. A School boy fine for oh, sure. Okay. Dang. I'm just happy you have sleeves on today. Sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Just have sleeves it's a, on. It's huh? a big step for Alex wearing sleeves on Ultra. this episode of uh, Listen, O-Line Committee. When you come out of six months of the coldest weather i don't care if it's 50 and raining i'm wearing a tank top i need to get outside guys you know how it's been here it's miserable that's fair i'm going golfing later so that's why i'm getting i'm getting put together to work on that swing amazing are you a good golfer absolutely not no he's nope. horrible horrible awful but i'm getting lessons I'm getting lessons because it makes me absolutely furious to be bad at it well okay. and if you if you if you look the part that's sort of half of it right you'll build, no, build the confidence with that top button listen, and go was, from there there was we this, can I say saw, that you can say that until you hit like hole nine, and then you're just tearing up the course. And you can look as good as you want. Everyone's like, "Dude, stop hitting it over there, please!" And you're like, "This guy's golf? dressed like Ricky Fowler, so and golf? he's shooting 150." Golf, pickleball. There is this video I saw on Instagram that's like, "I don't like when there's sports that I just can't naturally be better at because I'm bigger, faster, stronger." That's true. Like I like is like I go show up to pick up basketball game. I'm gonna be better because I'm six six. Like. Go play some type of like, but like you go to pickleball and you've got this five foot seven, 155 pound dude out there just <laughs> raking you over the coals. Just drives me bananas. Dude, how about the grandmas that just take people to town? And you're like, wow, this is incredible. This is fun. You want to get out there? No, I don't. I yeah, absolutely do not want to look stupid like the rest of you. I, I played am pickleball so for like three hours once. My knees wanted to explode. And I was like, well, that's enough of that. Jeez, shot. They're now, they're now, I can speak from uh, my, my dad's old uh, retirement community. They're now like replacing tennis courts with pickleball courts. Yeah. Good. Fastest growing sport in America. It it's is. amazing. Uh, you know, another big sport is football. The National Football League. And we're going to do a deep dive here into the New York Giants offense. The mastermind mm. that is Brian Dable, the $40 million a year quarterback that is Daniel Jones. Danny Dimes. Was it, was it, is it Daniel Jones that earned the 40? Was it Brian Dable building some things in? We're going to do a deep dive into it. If you guys could, this is a brand new channel here on YouTube, the O-Line Committee. If you could click the subscribe button and the like button. It'll help spread the word about two former NFL offensive linemen uh, nerding out over film with their top buttons done or their sleeves off. So please do that if you could. But uh, before we jump into the film here, just your general thoughts. The Giants, they made the playoffs for the first time last year. Brian Dable comes in a very run centric offense for Daniel Jones and a lot of uh, sort of just like misdirection and different things. Your just general thoughts on the Giants offense before we dive in. Well, you know, I have a little bit of a unique perspective on the fact that, you know, I played for Dable in Buffalo for two years. So I was he was my offensive coordinator um, there when Josh Allen was a rookie. I could see how Dable was building the offense around him and what Dable wanted to do. And, you know, what Dable was able to do with that roster last year was incredible because that roster was not good. Like it had holes everywhere. They're paying a receiver. 25 million dollars I think he played 75 snaps in the entire year or something crazy like that you know but he had some pieces right he had Daniel Jones who I think he saw a lot of similarities to Josh Allen with the running style big body you have Saquon Barkley which is always going to help as long as you keep that guy healthy and you know and then he had two tackles that he knew could play at high levels right you draft Evan Neal in the first round Andrew Thomas was coming off the heels of becoming an all pro type player so there was certain pieces put together but the way he would scheme things and the way he would put guys in positions to win was just fantastic and is why they were able to have success and why they beat the Vikings in the playoffs and why Alex Boone owed me dinner in Indiana <laughs> to, all right listen I think this is the one of the things that, and Phil kind of brought it up right like who got Danny paid more Danny or Dable I've loved Dable since I could stop trying to figure out his offense, right? Like three years ago when he was going crazy and we were doing shows and we were like, man, 
what is this guy on? Like, you just don't know what's going to come off next, right? Like, it's just everything is just a crapshoot. And then you talk about last year in New York, and you have this quarterback who at times can get away from pressure and run around. And that was one of the things I think so many people overlooked. Like, they were like, oh, big deal. He's only running for like eight yards. Like, yeah, but it's a first down. He's setting a whole new set of downs for his team. And it's the fact that Dable can just get out there and start running these exotic plays. And then when everything breaks down, your quarterback just takes off. And he makes good things happen. And all of a sudden, the guys are starting to feel themselves. And the defense is constantly putting pressure on people. And they're just blitzing people randomly. Like, everything about this team stems back to Dable. And it's his attitude towards everything. Jeremiah and I just saw him at the combine. And the way that he ran into you and, like, totally just chest bumped you and was like, get the fuck out of my way. I was like, dude, wait, what? This is great. This is incredible. Like, he was like, Jeremiah, what's up, dude? I was like... It's like meeting one of my friends. I can't believe this guy's a head giant, coach. This is giant this stogie. Incredible. He had a giant stogie Huge. smoking a cigarette down the streets up, of dude? Indianapolis. Just standing there <laughs> talking like, to us. And I'm like, you're like, wait a minute. This cigar. is the head coach of a team? No wonder they are the way they are. And that's what I love about the NFL is that most of the teams take on the personality of their coach. And that's why I love this hiring because he is a guy that's out there like, I don't give a shit. I'm going to do what I want to do. We're going to go out here and do what we need to do to win this game. And if everything breaks down, Danny, just run. Okay? Because you can do do it and sometimes people don't even realize how much you're doing it and it's awesome to watch yeah. i think like th that's my biggest question is and and listen hey 40 million dollars a year awesome congratulations i'm not gonna i'm not here to take money out of someone's pocket but if you have a head coach that can come in and get that type of production and sort of whether it's through the offensive scheme or whatever out of daniel jones based on what he did in his first three years then wouldn't you be confident without paying Daniel Jones $40 million a mm. year to just, hey, then can't you just bring in the next guy for a lot less, keep your roster bolstered? I think that's my biggest question before we dive into some of this film is, boy, if you got a guy like Dable, does it make sense to, to I mean, the, to handcuff him and the front office by, by tying up that much money of your salary cap to a quarterback that's not one of the 10 best in the NFL? It's not always, the grass ain't always greener. Mackie, the grass ain't always greener. If you have something that's working and you have something that you can see the bones of, and, you know, we didn't get to see Daniel Jones every single day like Dable did. You know, we got to see his growth on Sundays, but I bet you his growth was exponential through training camp, OTAs, and I bet you he's even take a bigger jump this year as he has more understanding. You know, he was a first-round pick, right? Like, he, yep. he isn't a slap. And also, when you have the success like the Giants do and you go to the, and you go to the playoffs, you're not picking in the top ten. There was no quarterbacks left that I would be willing to bet my franchise on after you take those top three quarterbacks, right? You take those guys and you're like, okay, those are the guys in the draft because you heard it over and over again, pretty weak overall quarterback draft. Like, why try and start over when you have a quarterback that, yeah, you're going to pay 40, but you're not paying him 55. You're not paying him 60 like Joe Burrow and those guys are going to get. But at the same time, like, you put a guy in a focal point and you bring stability to the offense, Right When you're a new head coach, you already come in, there's a ton of instability. If you can just sure up some pieces, you bring stability to the offense with Daniel Jones, you bring stability to the offense with Saquon on his fifth-year option or whatever it is, Like you have pieces, and then you can go out and start building in the draft from other sides, Right, your offensive line, your cornerbacks, your receiving room, and you start building pieces around Daniel Jones because I do think he's a good enough quarterback to maybe not merit 40, but I do think he's probably a top 10 quarterback in the NFL, um, and I'm going to get – absolutely blistered for that wow by some people but i do think his production and his ability to create plays is what puts him up there well i will say that once you get past like the top eight or nine quarterbacks it becomes less obvious how to rank them because yeah. you've got tom brady moved out of the league and russell wilson took a huge step back and so um it, it, it's almost like i think of this as fantasy football and you think of this as actual human beings and team building which is very which Very is interesting. And, and I'm glad that Jeremiah said that. <laughs> that was so smart that he said that because that's the one thing that everybody forgets is like you can't just go out and buy Patrick Mahomes. There's no Patrick Mahomes on the street that's available. And then at the end of the day, you have to think, hey, listen, this guy did some really good things last year, right? It's his turn to get paid. It's like Jeremiah said, he's not breaking the bank. We're not bringing in a Brinks truck to pay him. We are paying him a lot, but compared to what everybody else is making, it's good enough for us. And at the same time, what happens if we bring somebody in and everything goes south? What happens if it's just not a natural fit? What if nobody likes him? I'm sure behind the scenes, and this is one thing that everybody has to know, for the most part, unless you're Arizona, you're not going to pay your quarterback unless the team loves him. You know what I'm saying? Like They have to feel the leadership from him. Mm -hmm. They have to know that everyone's going to rally around this guy when everything goes south. Because then they're like, well, why are we paying anybody at all? Like The one guy that we're going to take care of, we have to make sure that he's the aura of the team. 
That's Can we confirm, we did, did they put a clause in his contract that he can't play video games? He has to watch a certain amount of film. You, you must you know, the watch film at least once <laughs> a week. Please. Danny, Danny, right? here's the Brinks truck, but we're going to need to make sure but that, uh, okay. Put the, the controller board. down. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Xbox <laughs> put board. it down. No, and, and that's one of the things that people need to know. Like, I think I've loved Daniel Jones since game league because he is so sneaky good at running that he does make these plays up. And at times you're like, dude, he's getting – murdered from every side of the field like at times he had no o-line just getting demolished his interior core two years ago gave up like 40 sacks alone so it's like this guy's been under a lot of stress and a lot of duress and now you bring in this new coach where all of a sudden things are starting to take off of course we're going to pay him and see where this goes this is something that we can put traction on and say hey the guys rallied around him last year imagine what he could do in another year of this offense with more guys around him more weapons more understanding of how this offense works that's how this this team will build well, let's take a look at what makes this offense work here. I'm going to mm. pop this up on the screen. Dude. This is where I bring some uh, some plays that I think are a hey. thing, and you guys talk about the concepts and the uh, the nuts and bolts of what actually goes into these. This first play, okay, I think this is the first time we've done this in the small handful of episodes. This play is called Extra Offensive Lineman on the Field. Yes. Oh, you can see him right there, dude. Look yeah. how big he is. This Little is tight end. this is heavy. Look at this. That right tight end. We have like we, look, so we have like fourteen tight ends and twelve offensive linemen on the field here. It's right. just glorious. I love this it. This is I a got, Dable got, offense if I ever saw one. I got six starts under Buffalo <laughs> being the heavy tight end, so I ain't gonna lie <laughs> about that. It's probably a pass too. <laughs> Knowing Dable, it's probably a pass. Like he's just Never. like, let's just go crazy. Never. This is early in the game. They're running duo here. One hundred percent. Oh, I missed it. Oh, it's the mid zone. Look at that. Look, is that Feliciano? It is. <sighs> One of my favorite centers out there. That guy is vicious. Niner gang now. Here we go. Well, so like you said, they go heavy, right? So they bring in the extra tackle. They bring him in, but what they do is Pause they it real quick. Go back. Yep. Go back. Go back to the beginning before he snaps it. You know Jeremiah's going to tell you something sweet right here. Right here. Right. So you see they bring the extra tackle in, and they bring him over on the right side. So you see everyone's kind of motioned and pushed over to the left. You see over there. But this is obvious. Everyone's going to think it like I did. You're running to the strong side, right? You don't bring a tight end, an extra lineman in to run away from him. So initially, everyone's antennas up for running to the left. And then you just backdoor it here, and you sneak them back out the left side here. And then again, you have two tight ends, so 13 personnel. Like This, this can hit either way. And then once you see the motion across here, again, you see 56, see you see six going across the ball. They're immediately out leveraged. And with that, I think the so one thing that you love here, too, is if you look at that defensive structure, 92 and 4, they're trying to stop duo. That's why they're both in there right now. We're going to shut both of these double teams down, and we're going to force you to block these man on, right? So it makes it takes two guys blocking one guy, and it takes them off and makes them more man. It's harder to do. And plus, number four right there, that's an extremely hard block for that tight end. See how the ball snapped, and he's not even off the ball. Number one, he can barely hear anything. He can barely see anything. So he's kind of going at the reaction. See how that's a, not so much of a good double team right there? But look over here. There's nobody over here. It's all green grass now. This is a day bowl type of offense. We're both wrong. It's not duo. It's not pass. It's toss the other way. Like you, This is why everything becomes so complicated because you're like, I'm almost guaranteed it's a power duo scheme over here. Look, all the emotion. Oh, yeah, get over there. And then all of a sudden we pitch it the other way. And you got two guys blocking a linebacker that just look like they're having a field day on him. The guy who makes this play, the unsung hero, is number 13 over there, I think it is. That Hodges. receiver, that is Calais Campbell. That is a giant human being, number 93 right there. He's huge. He's all of 6'8", all of 320 maybe. Probably he's, he's older now, so he's probably more like 310. Yeah. But watch him. Th this down block makes this entire play. A, it's, he's got a long ways to go, but he is just putting himself in there, and he's going to get right under his armpit, and he's going to lift Calais Campbell up off the ground. Wow. Look, look at that. that. Look, like, at look at that, that. leverage. Yeah. Look how many guys clear uh, around him. Oh, look, oh, hey, oh, wait, wait, oh, go back. Oh. Look how many guys are clearing around that block. Three, three guys. He's getting three. Three pullers around him. Great kick That's out insane. here. Thomas kicks out, right, head on the inside, kick out there. Guy upside, he goes Redson right on. Redson and Feliciano on the linebacker to the safety. Dude, this should go to the house. Big block here is Evan Neal on the backside, too, getting through there, getting up to number six. The guy who always makes the play on on these tosses is the backside linebacker, right? He's still going to make the play, but now it's 20 yards down the field. Beautiful, man. <sighs> That's I mean, you, you just don't see three guys pulling around a receiver blocking Calais Campbell, who, by the way, is an all-pro. Like, that's why this works, and a lot of that is because of Dable's mentality, right? Like, how many receivers do you see coming down there that can actually block a defensive end like that? 
and it's Dable saying, it. if you don't do it, I'll find somebody that does. Or it's the mentality that these receivers are not like, yo, I'm in this offense. We are in a run heavy, so we need to, we need to make these run plays work because if they don't work, how do you think we're going to get the ball? Like that's kind of how this stuff starts to formulate itself together, which is fun to watch because when you have receivers that can block, it changes the entire game. It also helps when you know that you have a running back back there that can take it the distance anytime he touches the ball. True. Like you know, like, hey, I just need to give Saquon a, a baby crease. He doesn't need a lot. Yeah, I just gotta fit those giant quads through here and he's gonna go all the way to the <laughs> just house. Ridiculous. Just massive. Uh, who do they call? He's not the quad father, though. Isn't that that Packers running yeah, back? A.J. Dillon, I think. Oh, A.J. Dillon. Dillon's the quad father. Yeah. This yeah guy, we though. should do, like, quad NFL running back quadricep uh, power rankings at some point here <laughs> in the O-line committee. Dude, hey, that would be uh, actually be it. a fitting fitting award for us. We got some big quads in our gym. <laughs> yeah, good dude. Cordell so would definitely win. This is uh, I'll roll this here, but this is this appears from from my uh from my fan eye anyways, just to be a read option with Daniel Jones. Mm. So again, this mm. and th- some of this as re- one of the themes here I'd love to unpack with you guys as we continue through is okay, how much of this is Dable? How much of this is Daniel Jones? How much of it is just them working really well together? I love it. Um so here you go. Ooh, bringing the safety down. Here we go. Oh, what did I tell you? Nobody even knows the guy has the ball. Oh, my God. Who safely slides down. Nice. So this is, this is a combination of both of them, obviously. The scheme fits really well. 26 is buzzing into the box. All of a sudden, we take this fake handoff. Nobody has any idea except for the guy getting held. I mean, this is go back to the a, lot, a lot of that is kind of the fact that when you hold that ball out in front of 26, a lot of people get scared, too. Like, that's right. why it's it's – the scheme and the system that just works well. Schematically, and, schematically here too, when they drop that safety in the box, 26 right there, he's supposed to have the quarterback. Like he's the one that has the quarterback. So like the way that they're going to ID this is they're just going to spot this. And what I mean by spot, a lot of zone plays have man principles versus spot principles. But with spot principles, that's saying, hey, we're, we're singling our first combination here between 76 and 68 is going to a spot which is going to be where 44 is. The next combination is going to a spot, which is where 45 is. And then you come through here and Belling, I think this is Chris Myrick, number 82. Um, you know, he comes through here and he understands like he has the guy that has man coverage on him standing right over the top of him, obviously. And then you know that there's the zone read off the DN, but 26 is supposed to have the quarterback here. But because Saquon Barkley is who Saquon Barkley is, 26 gets lost completely in the shuffle oh. here. He sees nothing. Right, because he's thinking, man, I got to tackle this, and then you see the defensive end. Also, man, twenty six is a complete just animal. I got to squeeze down hard on this, and it just completely loses the edge. You know, they want to run a squeeze scrape scheme here, which means the defensive end squeezes down ball, and then this guy is supposed to scrape over the top, and he just completely misreads this. He doesn't scrape, which leads to a giant run here by Daniel Jones. Eighty two gets away with a. Pretty yeah, decent hold there. I'm gonna be fair with. Listen, <laughs> listen, my dude. You probably would have made that play, but you stuck your nose way too far in there. And if you get close to us, we're gonna grab you, right? And yep. I mean, he's but, literally holding on to. to but I also an arm want you to notice there's a little this. embellishment there. To no be question. Fair. Hey, there's two guys here on this screen that don't get touched by anybody, and the quarterback still just runs around the defense for about a good 40 yards. That has to do with the scheme, like. Obviously, they're they're afraid of Saquon right now. They don't want him running the ball all over them anymore. There's something's going on in the game that they're like, no, no, no matter what, stop this one guy, please. Right? We're loading the box for this exact reason. Twenty six even does a double take. <laughs> he stops, he's checking the ball, looks at Daniel Jones. Is like, no way, he has the ball. Looks back at twenty six while Daniel Jones is running around. Like this. Is so these two a- dudes, these two dudes who who we circled here, neither one of these guys, no one engages with these guys, right? No. Both those guys are on the quarterback. And the problem is they both do the opposite thing. Like, if the defensive end is going to hold, 26 can bury his nose in there like he is. Like, you can do that as long as the defensive end is holding his position and we have contain outside. But at the same time, if you're going to squeeze, it's like Jeremiah said, you have to scrape outside. Somebody always has to keep contain on the outside. And if you don't, it's easy for the quarterback to just run around everybody. You know, I, I worry that if the Colts play defense like this, they're susceptible to some big second-half blown leads at some point. I'm just going to throw that out there. Just going to throw that out there. You just got to be careful. Just an observation. Well, yeah. So just one more time, Maggie. So pause it right there. So 
we'll go we'll go a little bit of oh go back to the right before the snap there right so we'll do a little education here right a little education so i talked about a squeeze and a squeeze and a scrape right so take your little cursor there a and squeeze and a scrape a sounds like scrape. Uh, the, the morning is... after old macadac eats too spicy of a, <laughs> of a dinner the night before right yeah. so you have squeeze and scrape when I, we say that this is how you defend the, the the zone where you defend it two different ways so this is a squeeze which we're talking about this defensive end is going to squeeze down on the nearest down block, right? So 82 goes down, so the defensive end squeezes down, and 26 is supposed to scrape over the top of him to come back this outside way. this way, yes. right? There's another way you can do this. The other way is called you box it. And what that's what Alex was talking about, where this defensive end is going to box this, which would mean that he steps straight up the field, keeps his shoulders square, and he is responsible for the quarterback. And now 26 can bury his nose in there any way that he wants. So he's sort of setting a – he would be in a box yes, situation. Right he is he is sort yes. of setting a, a perimeter. Correct. For Daniel Jones is not going to get outside me. He's going to have to go up the field if he wants to gain yards. Yep, Correct. and then you 26 have to the has the off. running back. Here That's they have a miscommunication. Both guys are going after the running back. And that's where you see the complete lacks in the Colts defense, which allows for the big run by Daniel Jones. Got it. And that's yeah. normally if the defensive end were to stay there, the quarterback would hand it off, obviously, because he doesn't want to get tackled. And we don't want the quarterback getting tackled ever. So if you're not going to go for a long run, you're handing it off for sure. We're all about education. This, All about education. No, this education. is great. And, and I feel like at the at the end of maybe we do like three month checkpoints where uh, like well, you, we'll you tried to test. quiz me last episode. Okay. All right, what do you see here? And it was a uh, single high safety. So I've, I feel like I've reached level new, one. New of, yeah. <laughs> By the end of this podcast, Maggie, you're going to watch games like Alex and I watch games. We don't watch oh, games. Oh, is it a box? Is it, is it a squeeze? Games. What is what is right. this? We What's analyze happening? games. We don't watch games. I'm just games. looking where the we center's analyze. pointing. Where does yep. the center point? Where does the sack come from? Uh-oh. All right, let's go. Let's do it. You know, I know you guys, especially Easy Alex, loves a good trap play here. So oh. let's, let's do a Saquon... Lord of the thighs here, a little little trap play. This is against the Minnesota Vikings, of course. My Minnesota Vikings giving up. <laughs> I don't know that this looks like a trap play, Mackie. Chunks of yards. You're failing the, your test. This one's not, but this one is. Right oh, okay. Here. There we go. <laughs> there you go. This start is a trap play. That. It's a 40 yard pass down the yeah, field. Start okay, with let's... a seven step. <laughs> All right, let's roll it here. Mm. Mm. That's a trap, right? Yes. Churn in butter, buddy, before yeah, anybody even knows that. what's going on. We broke this play down, didn't we? This one hurt my heart a little you bit. You and I did this one. Yeah, on we Purple did. Daily, I remember yeah. this one. All right, so here we go again. Look, go back, go back. We got a nice light box. Oh. Go back, go back, go back, Mac, Macadac, Macadac. Let me see it right there. Oof, that's a juicy box. You got six blockers. You guys got six in the box. Everybody's kosher. Let's do this. What are we call Mackie? What are we saying up front? Uh, we're going to say. Uh, what's 97 here and right now that's making him want to come off the ball? He's uh, he's hearing five zero. Mm. Deuce. 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 Okay. Deuce. 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 Right? Deuce. We're faking the deuce. We got the guard going to fifty four. We should have the tackle going to fifty eight. This is a clean box. Tight ends this, coming back out. This is also a little bit game within the game here. Harrison Phillips, number ninety seven, was also with the Buffalo Bills, while Brian mm. Dable was with mm. the Buffalo Bills. We all know what we refer to D Lyman as blind dogs in a meat house. He is the definition of that. He is just a penetrating fool. He just wants to get up the field and disrupt and do all that. So how do you combat that? You just make him think he does exactly what he wants to do. And if you watch this, his helmet goes left once he gets going, right? So they, they fake him. They let him go. No one touches him. He gets up the field. He looks right, oh, oh, left, oh, oh, right. Oh, oh, oh. Then he looks back oh. to the left, and then it's too late. He's getting killed. He has Dude, no you've had all idea day. what's you've going on. You've had all day to figure this one out, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> Boom! He still oh, gets steamrolled. No. You could just a see his little Viking guard. horns. Glowinski. His little, his little Vikings oh. horns just looking back and forth, and then it's too late. Dude, Glowinski looks more like a Viking than anybody in the league. This dude's big beard <laughs> came from the Lions, just man eater coming through here. And that's what's so fun about this is like when you get a guy that doesn't know what's going on and you just <sighs> crush him. I think you've hit on something. If you're the Vikings, you should look to sign more players. I mean, the Giants have a guy that looks like the looks looks like a Viking. The Vikings need more guys who look like Vikings. <laughs> It's a requirement. Chris Hovan looked like a Viking, you know? Dude, John Hovan. Randall looked like a Viking with the war paint and everything. Mm -hmm. Let's get some Dude. more of these guys. The big John blocks Randall. here, Feliciano and the yeah, tight end. Especially because look how fast the nose is coming off the ball. Yeah. And he's Feliciano got, he's, and the tight end are the biggest blocks that make this play go. They create the hole. 
I mean, that's the Darius, that's the Darius Smith out there. That's an all pro multi sackier guy. And all you got to do is just get in the way, just yep. get in the way, like just occupy him because traps such a quick hitting play. Look at and that then spin. Harry Patrick. He's so good. So, okay, so we've seen, so we've run three plays here. I get that this is a, a cherry-picking small sample size, but but wasn't the, you know, in Buffalo, the concern the last few years, like last couple of years of Dable and then after he left is, boy, where's the Buffalo running game, right? They just, they've, they've been so reliant on Josh, their running game is basically Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so Brian Dable goes to New York here, and it, it, it almost feels like, all right, now I'm going to show off a little bit. I can scheme a running game. I can scheme read options. I can scheme interesting trap plays. We're going to show you a couple more here, too. So why, why, I guess maybe I'm oversimplifying it, but why did Buffalo struggle so much in the run game? And then Brian Dable goes to goes to the to the Giants. Is it all just offensive linemen being better? What's the... No, it's the fact that Saquon Barkley's in the backfield, and he was smart enough to go, oh, one of the best running backs is in my backfield? Let's make him the focal point of our offense. Like, that's what's so awesome about this is so many people get so mad at Buffalo, and it's like, but you don't really have a guy to give the ball to that you can rely on. Yeah, there are guys, and they all kind of fit a different mold. Like, the one guy's really good at taking a toss. The other guy's good at inside zone. The other guy's good at power. It's like, here, Saquon can do everything. So why not use him in every way? And I, I, I think about this a lot because I really appreciate the fact that Dayball – throws him so many screens too and gets him the ball in different ways. I'm not always going to hand him the ball, but I'm going to make him the biggest threat on the field. And at times we're going to try and like show him off and we're not going to give him the ball. And at other times we kind of lull people to sleep and it's like, did you just see that screen that they just threw that nobody knew was coming? Like this is, and that's why it's so fun to watch, but that's why they're so run dominant is because they have the player to do it. So you might as well go out there and run all over everybody because if you can do that, it sets up the pass game even better. And I guess, I, I guess I would have said, isn't, isn't offensive line and scheme sort of like 75% responsible for a successful run game and not to discredit running backs, but that the running back is sort of, once you've got your line and your scheme, Unless you're Barry Sanders from 30 years ago, but maybe, but so so the gap between Saquon and the Bills running backs over the years is just that much wider that they can do a lot more stuff. Is what I you're saying? I think so. You know, yeah, I, since I think, they've had I Josh think Allen, Singletary's. I mean, he's kind of they're good. He's good. I mean, they draft James Cook in the second, fumbles on his first ever snap, doesn't really get a ton more touches up there in Buffalo. Like they don't have a bell cow. You know, all great running teams have a bell cow. Miles Sanders for the Eagles. Right. You look at it. You looked at what Adrian Peterson was for the Vikings forever. What Ezekiel Elliott was when he was healthy. Right. Like all these teams that have dominant run games, Niners with McCaffrey, they have a bell cow that, you know, like is can create things even when the scheme's not great. You know, those other guys in the backs that are kind of that middle third to bottom third of the league, they can't create as much because like they're just not as good. And I'm not saying that they're still great, like, but they're not elite. Like, there's elite-level backs, and then there's good backs. And Saquon's an elite back, so you make him the focal point. Can I blow your minds real quick on a, on a running back fact? So, you know, Dalvin Cook is the Vikings running back, and his brother James Cook is with the Bills. Oh, yep, Buffalo. Did, did, you, did you guys know that James Cook's name is James Dalvin Cook? I didn't and know Dalvin's, that. And Dalvin Cook's name is Dalvin James Cook? Preempted. Premeditated. I love it. Isn't that good? I love hmm. it. Huh? Mine's no, blown. No. Efficiency in naming your kids. Yeah. All right, we got two names. We're just going to... Middle name. Yeah. Just We're not going to get too... Uh, yeah. Flippity yeah. flop. Snip the flippity, snap, snap. flippity flop. Okay, Alex, you wanted Saquon Barkley out of the backfield as a pass catcher. You oh, got Saquon the, Barkley out of the backfield. Is this the one that I text backfield. you about? Because this was, this was a real... That was yeah. a true story. When I text you, I was like, did you just see that? Like, I believe the text was, DUDE in all caps. You have to grab this play. Just it's because... It's just Saquon leaking. Look at that! What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? You want to talk about a scheme master? Okay. Their offense at times is so juicy and so fun to be around because you just don't know what's going to happen. Like you think the ball's going deep down the field. Saquon's really just running an out route and we're throwing him the ball. That's it. These other three guys over here, they're decoys. They're just told to run as fast and as hard as possible. Cross as many eyes as you can. If you can drag somebody across the field with you, do it because we're throwing this ball right about now this is also the vikings new logo as of 2022 aging linebackers trailing five to ten yards in coverage i'm telling you man all due He's... respect to future ring of honor viking eric kendricks who i, I mean, hope does well in you can Los even Angeles. if you go all the way back to the top like you can see so they're they're seesawing this coverage right between 58 and 54 they have saquon in man 
right? So if Saquon bumps out to the right, 58 takes him. If Saquon goes to the left, 54 takes him. The hard part here is Eric Kendricks has to drop back into the hook curl as well to pretend to protect that tight end if he just goes and turns around right at the hash, right? So this tight end runs up here, and you see Kendricks sees him. You can see they're talking to each other right now, like, okay, seesaw it. Who has it? And then so Saquon starts on the left, so Hicks initially thinks he has him in coverage. And then as he bails out to the right here, he's pointing he like, Eric, that's your Ooh. guy now. But Eric's getting bought up with this tight end that's crossing his face, right? And that's a big point of this is that I promise you, Dable sat in the install meeting and was like, you must cross his face. You cannot go behind him. You cannot go around him. You have to either go through him or directly across his face because Eric's looking him up right now. Hicks is pointing, and by that point, it's too late. He's completely out leveraged. Go back real quick. Notice how the receiver behind Kendricks, he's also going in front of him. See how they're both Go going the wide. Go to the wide. <coughs> That's how you draw coverages. You have yep. to run in front of them. Yeah, you can't go around them, right? You have See? to take an inside release and go in front of these guys. So amazing to watch because then you just toss it to your running back right there and it's just gone. Because if also if you cross their face, they're going to be in a trail position, which means their back's going to be to where the ball needs to go, right? This nickel's an outside coverage, outside leverage. He has no idea this ball is being thrown because he's just blanketing his man, and then there's just no one left on the outside. Yeah, this is so. This is, uh, this is of course, I'm going to turn this into a Vikings rant. This was like 17 weeks of torture watching the Vikings <laughs> do this, and it, it's it, it is some of its giant scheme, some of its Saquon Barkley scheme, a lot of it's just Vikings miscommunication and uh, guys who are 31 years old on defense. But th that's how you take advantage of it. If you're the yeah. Giants, this is exactly if you're going into a game against guys. You got a 30-year-old linebacker and a 31-year-old linebacker, a new defensive scheme. They've never played together before. This is the type of thing you would do all day long to take advantage, which is a credit to Brian Dable. Right, and you said it. It was the, it was kind of the theme all year. The defense is just getting beat like a drum, and it's just one more way to get our bell cow the ball without having to hand it to him. But now we can get him the ball in open space, which also – Jeremiah was talking before about like good running backs to elite running backs. I think when you think about an elite running back – you think this guy is a three down back. If I throw him the ball, he's going to make somebody miss and he's going to take off. Or if he's in man coverage versus a linebacker, it's definitely a win. If he's in man coverage versus a nickel, it's going to be a great fight. Like these are the reasons that make this team so fun is because you can just put this one guy, kind of like we talked about last week with San Francisco where they're moving guys around. Well, here it's like we're going to move one guy around. And we're going to make everybody on the defense respect him, see him. And if we get, if we can out leverage them or get them in those positions where they're seesawing and we have a tight end coming across and they have to communicate mid play, guess what? You've already lost because Saquon's still running as fast as he can and he's not going to drop the ball. So, yeah. okay, this next play for you guys, I'm going to call it how many running backs and tight ends can we put on the field without getting called for too many tight ends and running backs mm -hmm. on the field? All right, so this you're going to see this is old school stuff. This is like a 70-year-old throwback play here. So let's bring it wide. This is like a 30, 32 offense. Three running backs, two tight ends. Zero oh, they're in pistol. Zero Talk receivers to me about pistol, baby. <laughs> this, I'll Dude, just run this. This is, this is so fun. This is, this is Nebraska 1997 <laughs> triple option <laughs> from the gun. Hey, Tom is. hey, this is yeah, this dude. is San Francisco 2012, baby. Pistol. We got Vernon Delaney back there. We got Frank. Who we got back here? Talk to me, Ooh, Saquon. Ooh, oh, look, the defense doesn't even know what to do. <laughs> what are we going? So, and it's a pass play. It's a wheel route pass play out of this. And before, I mean, before you even go, so when you see this personnel run into the huddle, right, like on the defensive side, you're <laughs> gonna put up. you're gonna put your base <laughs> defense on the field. Where are we right. going? You're going to put your base defense on the field, and then they motion into this pistol. They widen a guy out, and now you're going, oh, shoot, I wish we had some like sub guys on the field. right? They got f four D linemen on the field, four, two, three linebackers. right? So you're they trying to get everyone to line figured out. out where to go. And this is just a simply – this is triple option, right? So if you snap the ball and pause it right away, right? So if you snap it, boom, pause it right there. So there's two things here. He can hand it, right? He can hand it if 97 squeezes. But again, they're going to squeeze and scrape this. So 40 is going to roll over the top. So 97 is going to squeeze. 40 is going to roll over the top. And then you go, okay, so we're not going to hand it. But then over there you go, okay, if they're going to squeeze hard and they're going to come down to stop the run, then we just send this guy out. Instead of blocking him, we just tell him to put his foot in the ground and get north and south, right? 21's eyes are in the backfield. 21's looking directly at the ball. And so he has no chance of – catching up with this guy once he gets rolling down the field yeah so 20 you see 21 here just watch yep. 21 here for the audience yep 
as we run this play. 21 has the ball. He's and don't, okay. I have Daniel don't forget, Jones on the run. Oh, shoot, it's too late. If these two guys, too. That's a nice forget, pass, by the way. Go back. If you go back a little bit and see that if 21 goes with the first running back, 31, and 40 goes with the second running back going across, Danny Dimes can just run it. There's so many plays out of this one play, right? Like if these guys just both see these receivers and take off towards them, he could also run it. And that's why these offenses are so fun. You just saw the defensive line. We're looking at you like, dude, where do we line up? This is supposed to look like a goal line front, and we look like we're in third down. What is going on? Is this moment right here as as offensive linemen or anyone on offense? I'm gonna I'm gonna take you back. This moment right here, where you have motioned into this. What what is this? A 32 offense, right? Because three running backs, two. So you've two done you've ends. you're you're throwing it back to the 1990s, the 1960s, and the defense is pointing and and running back and forth. Is this not one of the most satisfactory feelings as an offensive player? Right, you're- like literally right here. You're trying to create chaos with them. So you, as they're starting to freak out, you're starting to scream even louder because you know it's a simple run to the left. Like it's literally snap the ball, run to the left because Dan's going to obviously fake the zone and then he's going to roll out. So it's like a waggle, right? We're taught to just turn and run. So when you get down and you see them screaming and freaking out, you kind of start <laughs> screaming too and freaking out like, BBB, B, B, hey, we got to go to 40. Go to 40. You hear me? Because then all of a sudden they're like, hey, it's all for sure a run. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's really just a pass. Like sometimes if you can create more chaos for them, you will. You'll just start screaming random things and no, you're wrong. It's a power. And it, it's it's fun. But then at times you're like, okay, I wish it wasn't so chaotic. Like they get their third down where they're just licking their chops and you're like, okay, I had fun on first and second down. Now it's their turn to have fun. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is where the rubber meets the road, boys. Okay, here we go. Get big, get big. It's hard, man. It's it's a it's a mental mental game all right i have uh this and alex you've seen this one because we did uh, for purple daily we did a bunch of giants vikings things but uh jeremiah this is a statue of liberty right here Mm. this is a giant statue of liberty this is the bag. like brian dable has such a deep bag of doesn't care does not hey remember that remember that play from the little giants Let's do that. <laughs> the annexation of Puerto watching, Rico. Hey, Let's go. I was watching it last night with the kids. We should try it. Yeah. I talked to Rick Moranis actually on the phone. We uh, <laughs> They're bringing watching, in the icebox today. <laughs> I was watching Boise State, Oklahoma last night at 3 in the morning, and I saw this play. <laughs> should we no paint our reason. field blue, actually, I think? Let's paint the Dude, field t- blue. This sounds like real things that Dave all says every day in his office. <laughs> hey, Joe. Joe, question. Can we paint the field blue? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Just had to throw John, it out there. John, let me ask the owner. I'll ask the owner. <laughs> so, all right. I'll roll the uh, Statue of Liberty here. This is uh, this is in the the deepish hey, red here. This is this is blowing my mind. Do you think he calls the owner John or Johnny? Johnny. Johnny. Uh, for sure. He Johnny. looks like a Johnny guy, right? Right. right. Johnny. Respectfully, here. though. Respectfully. I think he yeah. calls him Steve or Stevie? Steve. Steve. Steve-O. No, no one calls Steve-O? him Steve-O. Oh, he definitely calls him Steve-O. No one calls him Stevie. Steve-O. Come here. Steve-O, guy. Except for maybe you. Yeah. <laughs> All it's right. just a name. Mm, Let's go Statue full screen here for you guys. A little Statue of Liberty Annexation action. Annexation of Puerto Rico. Here we go. Again, chaos, motion, 26. Look at that. Focal point, right? Go back. Go back. We just talked about, what did we say? If he's becoming the biggest person on the screen he's probably not getting the ball right here we've motioned him all the way in front of everybody to see him we all see him okay now look we're gonna run him real fast the other way because everyone freaks out real fast right and then we're not even gonna give him the ball so that's a tell so if so basically hey saquon ah, running around like he's if he's drawing that much attention to himself he's probably not getting the ball is that what you're saying i mean this is almost the most blatant motion (laughs) i've ever seen someone run and look, he does the fake hands too. He does Go do back. the fake hands. Oh, here comes ball. My ball. And honestly, if they throw he this jumps to him, in the air too. Honestly, look at this. if they throw this to him, he might score. That's what's sad. Like, and that's what that's the thing is like you go back and look at this on tape next week, and you're like, okay, maybe we do this exact same thing again, except for this time we throw it to him, right? Because right? honestly, you throw it to him, he has one on one with the corner, like because that receiver's going to block twenty two, and he's going to go around. But I digress. We'll go to the actual run play. Like, this is the most basic, simple run play of all time, right? It's just inside zone. It's just inside zone. That's all it is. I mean, how much? And they're not even blocking the front side linebacker. Go back. They expected Hicks to run with Saquon. Go back real quick. Because he's unblocked. 
and you know you obviously don't ever leave someone unblocked see how he comes in the box right there and then watch at the last second he tries to go out but then he stops and comes back in so he's this the is, one that saves this yeah, play this is harrison this is harrison smith for the vikings being extremely intelligent um and seeing like hey okay saquon's going back in motion instead of telling hicks to go back out with him you can see harry's just going to check this and be like i'll take him you stay in the box Right, because if if Hicks runs back out in motion with him all the way, like you see Harry right there, yeah. hey, I got him, I got him, I got him, like because you know right there, he's like, okay, we got to keep you in the box because if we don't, it's just a true five man box, then we're really screwed. Yeah, right. So everyone's blocked up here for five man. He's the one guy that can make this play, and he ultimately does. You know, so that's a heads up play by Harry, but that's also where you go back and go, okay, we'll rerun this play when we get back in the red zone again, and we'll just throw it to Saquon this time because Harrison Smith's extremely out leveraged. And this winds up only being what, like a three yard gain here, maybe a four. He, what did he get this to the five yard line? Yeah, so yeah. Just the, the Vikings did a decent job on it's this. The complexities actually. of making a making a simple play look look different, right? Like it's so many times you just see a straight fake pump and just hand this off. But the fact that the Statue of Liberty, maybe it hangs that guy one second a little longer, right? Like see Hicks takes that one little hop. Right, He takes that one little hop to the outside when he sees Daniel Jones turn his back to him and pretend like he's throwing the football instead of just turning and opening and throwing and handing this. Right, So all you're hoping for is that that guy takes one or two steps and then that can create a crease that ends up from a three-yard gain into a touchdown. Right. Is this kind of disrespectful? Like, are there any play calls that you would deem? No. Oh, boy, they, but this is going to be great to run, but they're going to. No, they're going to. That's, take just, this creative. that's just, just creative. That's just I'm trying to be creative. I mean, there's really the only disrespectful thing I could ever think that somebody would do is if you ever tried to clock it and you threw it, or if oh, you tried. Dan, to, Dan Marino did that one time, mm-hmm. didn't Brett Favre? Well, or if you try to take a knee and you try to then like run it, like you know what I'm saying, like that would be considered. What was the Greg or the Schiano defense thing. that goes hard on the knee? You're like, oh, dude, yes, that's, that's a disrespectful thing. You cannot like we've literally the ref will come up and be like, hey, he's taking a knee. Nobody do anything. All right, the game's over. You lost. You should try harder. You should try not harder. If, not if you're a Shiano right. man. Like yeah, go ahead, throw a fist when everyone's turning around to walk away. Okay, guys, real tough. That was the worst. Hate that. No, not disrespectful. No, I think everything's fair game in the NFL. In the National Football League. The so a lot of, just a lot of creativity there. A lot of creative running game action. You know, I, I actually saw, I was looking through some, just some different stuff on Twitter today. And again, this is not like to rip Daniel Jones or anything, but of what of what he's being asked to do, for instance. So the Giants percentage of passes thrown beyond the sticks on third down last year. Dolphins were number one. So they're asking to, hey, third down, you get that thing in the air. Uh, shockingly, the Vikings were mid-pack with, despite the Kirk Cousins fourth and eight uh, three-yard check down in the playoff mm-hmm. game. The Giants last in the NFL, only 34% of their third down passes went beyond the stick. So I just, I don't, I mean, it was a great year for Daniel Jones, but they weren't asking him to do as much as other quarterbacks, but it okay. obviously is working well, within that scheme. On. I'll defend, I'll, I'll put on my lawyer hat here. I'll defend Daniel Jones a little bit. Here we go. So... The two teams you mentioned, right? Miami and the Vikings. What are two things that they have that the Giants do not? Tyreek Hill, Hill and Justin Jefferson. Justin right. Jefferson, Jalen Waddle. Like you look at this Vikings or this Giants receiving core, they didn't have that guy. Right? Now what they do in the offseason, they drafted a guy in the third round that can absolutely burn coming out of Tennessee, Jalen Hyatt. And then they went and picked up Darren Waller, who's one of the best receiving tight ends in the NFL. Yes. So you start talking about, okay, what did, what did Dable do in Buffalo? He got digs for Josh Allen. He went and drafted um, Dawson Knox, right? Like he started putting weapons around Josh Allen to allow him to push the ball down the field more. And I think we're going to see a lot more out of that of the Giants this year. For sure. No. Case closed. All right. All right. We'll, we'll continue our uh, – wow. I'm sure not we'll have guilty. plenty of time not in the regular for season. Sure there, Jeremiah. We'll that was see. great. We'll see. I think was... I'm just more, I'm more pro, just to put a bow on this, I am. I love Brian Dable. The jury is not out on Brian Dable as an you offensive like mastermind. You look like by the way. I got to say that. People you look, say I'm, that. I feel yeah. like I'm talking to him right now. I'm like, Jesus, Dable, stop talking about yourself. You should grow the beard out a little bit more. I feel like I need a little bit more sweat on my forehead. and maybe Dude, it's all coming together tan. now. I'm like, that's why he looks so familiar. If I had Jeremiah's beard, I think I would be Brian Dable yeah, at this point. that's fair. That's <laughs> you should be Dable for Halloween. That'd be great. <laughs> I will. I feel like I, you're I'll, also just jaded by giant quarterback contracts. For you're sure. Being, being a you are. You're upset fan. about you're it. Just, you're like, just, should we? Should, should we just, do this? Should we keep paying this guy it. more and more money every single Are we year? just going to go down the road with the can? Just keep kicking it? Okay. <laughs> Anytime we'll I see it. a kind of a mediocre quarterback that makes too much money, I just, it's like I have <laughs> night sweats. 
Well, you know, it's, I mean, guy. I don't blame you, dude. Seriously, it's been it's been a long time for you. <laughs> yeah, we'll get there someday. Uh, if we could just reincarnate 2009 Brett Favre every year, that would be mm-hmm. enough for me. So, uh, well, I think he's doing court soon. So, he, yeah, <laughs> he <probably is. laughs> these are these are high res pictures now, man. There's no there's no hiding those. These are high res pictures now off these iPhones. Yeah, the flip phone's like, wait, is that Brett Favre's dinghy? Now it's like, okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's. Oh, uh, that's in 4K. We don't want to yeah. see that. We're good. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, Giants fans, uh, let us know what you think in the comment section on the O-Line Committee YouTube channel. Hammer the subscribe button, the like button, and uh, hammer me if you want for my anti-Daniel Jones takes. This is an offensive line lifestyle podcast, the O-Line Committee.